Podcast. Pod, podcast. 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 Pod, pod, podcast. Yeah, we are back. It's the Racer X Exhaust Podcast brought to you by Yoshimira here on the Racer X Podcast Network. I'm Jason Wygant. Missed this show for a couple of weeks. It's busy traveling all over the place. I know it's the off season. Had two trips to California in the course of three weeks. And the audio that I just got while out in California this week will be the subject of today's show. A couple things we need to talk about, though. In the time since I last did a podcast, two new RS-12 exhaust systems from Yoshimura have hit the market, now available for the Kawasaki KX450. And I didn't think this was possible with a motocross exhaust system because even the stock exhaust system doesn't have to meet any real crazy sound standards or anything like that. But the RS-12 for the 2021 Kawasaki KX450, actually it fits 2019 through 2021, 9.6% 9.6% gain in maximum horsepower and a 5.6% gain in torque. So if you have a KX450, a 2019, 20, or 21, check that out at Yoshimira-RD.com. And Yoshimira has one for the dual sports, the big dual sports, the very popular KTM 500 EXC. And it also does fit the Husqvarna 500 dual sport as well, although they call it a 501. Now, those bikes are super choked up exhaust-wise from the factory. So if you put an aftermarket system on, you're going to get big, big gains. And they did approximately 1 million percent gain in power with the RS-12. It's actually 21.8% peak horsepower gain and 15% gain in torque on these 500s. Look, I, I understand because I have a 350 dual sport and the bike is so quiet stock. It is insane how quiet it is. And if you're, you know, riding enduro type stuff, it'll actually work. But if you really want to open the thing up, it's not nearly as fast as a 350 should be. I'm assuming that the 500 dual sports the same way. So as I've been saying on the show, the RS-12 will be out for a variety of brands, not just Honda and Suzuki, which is traditionally the teams Yoshimura worked with. And here we go. Now we got KTM stuff. There's a YZ250F exhaust. We got the KX450 exhaust. Only bad news for Yoshimura is, dude, what is going on with these teams? Yoshimura was backing uh, Geico Honda and JGR Suzuki, and now those teams have shut down. I don't think the exhaust sponsor was the linchpin here. Uh, Geico Honda lost Geico as a sponsor, and the JGR story, I'm just going to have to get into that at one point, but that is just tragic. We really thought that was going to revamp, redesign, retool, rethink everything about motocross and supercross racing when that team came in for the 2008 season. Koi Gibbs had a real unique vision where they were going to have everything under one roof. There would be a team trainer. All the riders would use the same test track, the same trainer, go to the same race shop every day. And I know that doesn't sound that crazy now, but back then that really wasn't done that much. Most of the time the teams would just literally see the guy at the races and then the rider would do whatever. They'd ship him a practice bike and he'd train with whoever he wanted to train with. He'd ride with whoever he'd want to ride with. There wasn't a lot of supervision. That has changed drastically now. Uh, obviously the Alden Baker program, for example, right? These guys all ride together. Alden's watching. They send the information to KTM out in California when they're doing their laps in Florida. Nothing is left to chance. That was a pretty revolutionary idea in 2007 and going into the 2008 season. Now, JGR did not have the success that everyone expected them to have. Joe Gibbs has won Super Bowls, and then he switched to car racing. They're probably the most successful NASCAR team in the last 10 years with the variety of wins they've gotten with so many different drivers. It's pretty impressive. And by the way, they did it with Toyota, which is an upstart manufacturer in NASCAR. So honestly, it appeared there was no hill that Joe Gibbs Racing could not climb, but they could not solve this motocross thing. There were a few highs. They won two supercrosses with James Stewart. They won two outdoor nationals with Justin Barsha. But look, when you have Stewart and Barsha, No one is going to be satisfied with two race wins apiece. They wanted to win championships. And it didn't come together with those guys. And then things started getting worse. The injuries were out of hand. They switched to Suzuki. And, I mean, Abarsha wasn't even even able to make it to Anaheim 1 a couple of years. Then it started getting downright tragic with the injuries, right? So Weston Pike goes down at the Paris Supercross. Doesn't ever race again. Joey Savacci comes on board. 
He hurt his foot real bad in Australia, didn't race Supercross this year, really struggled coming back in the Nationals. Just nutball, man, uh, how bad it turned at the end and how symbolic it was that our last Lucas Oil Pro Motocross race, this is how it ended for JGR. Okay, you want to talk about, well, you could say they, normally the phrase is you go out with a whimper and not a bang, but there was, there, there kind of was a bang because all the guys hit the ground. Three riders were out injured for the final race of the year. Alex Martin broke his leg in practice at Fox Raceway. Savachi had hurt his ankle the week before. He tried to ride, couldn't go. And then Freddie Noren cracked his kneecap, they thought. And then three days later, he had x-rays done. and turned out he didn't crack his kneecap. But all three of those riders did not race the finale. It was kind of a fitting end to how badly things had spiraled for JGR at the end. Now, these guys are my buddies. Like, really close. I moved here to the North Carolina area at the end of 2010. And I was ostensibly going to work from home but I had worked in the Racer X office for 10 years before that. Sitting in a room by yourself isn't really that fun. It's not a creative environment. Ask me how I know. I'm doing it right now. So it was great to be able to go to that JGR shop, which is only about five minutes from my house. And I'd hang out there. I'd go there every Monday, a couple other days a week sometimes, and you know, just talk about the industry, rumors, things you heard, goof around. Then you'd see everybody on Friday at the airport, Saturday at the race, Sunday at the airport. Got really tight with that entire group. And there is a real cottage side industry of moto here in North Carolina. And it's still here, even with the team shutting down, but it's all from people that JGR imported to the area. Phil Nicoletti is here. Chad Reed is here. Justin Brayton is here. So many guys are here, partly because of the JGR connection in the first place. So we in this area can live without JGR right now, but that's what brought in so much talent and shops and infrastructure and trainers and things like that. So I do wonder where we're going to be in the future without JGR importing it. They did great things for the industry. They hired a lot of great people. Uh, the team had expanded to a Suzuki 450 and 250 team, I think, three years ago, and they actually doubled the size of the staff. Uh, it was looking good for a while to really revolutionize the sport with the private team that could battle the factories. And I believe when they got that Suzuki factory support, I don't feel like the JGR and Yamaha marriage was ever great. They at one point were considered Yamaha's factory team, but I don't think they really saw eye to eye with Yamaha. They did have a good relationship with Suzuki from a management and personal standpoint, but I think we all know that Suzuki's fortunes are not very fortunate right now. So they had a good thing going, but it was not sustainable. Suzuki tried to cut the budget of support last year. JGR negotiated and kept it. Suzuki tried to do it again this year. JGR tried to negotiate, and Suzuki did not budge. And it wasn't enough money, not even nearly enough, for JGR to do the program the way they wanted to. So they had to agree to disagree with Suzuki, and then they didn't have a title sponsor. It's been a big struggle to get one of those. And then Coy Gibbs, the team owner, that's Joe Gibbs' son, he finally had to pull the plug. And that's a real bummer. <sighs> Obviously, personally, for the guys over there. I talked to J-Bone, Jeremy Albrecht, the team manager, throughout this final week, which was last week when they were deciding all this. And eventually I had to separate what he was saying from what was really happening. He really couldn't come to grips with saying it was over. Now, I heard that they told all the employees it was over. And everyone had been told, I think they could work for one more week and they would pay them out, that kind of stuff. But J-Bone kept saying, no, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. And then I finally had to say to J-Bone, is this just how you feel about it? Like you're saying there's still a chance, even though there probably isn't. And he had to admit that that was a lot of it. I think J-Bone will probably end up still working over there in some capacity. It's still a big operation with the car racing. But he hasn't given up on the motocross dream. And I think Coy's bummed too. Obviously, Coy's situation has changed. Um, this was really tragic for the Gibbs family. Coy was running the motocross team. And then his brother, JD, was running the NASCAR side. And then JD, very young, uh, passed away to a very bizarre situation. Just a, a brain problem the Gibbs family never really defined what it is and then he passed away so Coy had to move over to the motocross sorry from the motocross side and do more on the NASCAR side but he stayed in it he kept supporting the motocross dream Coy's son Ty is one of the up-and-coming stars of NASCAR so that's about to get real busy I'd say maybe two years away that you'll start seeing Ty at a very high level in NASCAR so priorities somewhat shifted for Coy but I think 
he still would have stuck with it. I don't think he wanted to give up on this, but he was getting hit on both sides. They could not get a title sponsor, and Suzuki was pulling massive money out of the program compared to the money they were putting in a couple of years ago. So it eventually just didn't make any sense at all. And I think Koi has the money to bankroll it, but at some point you just got to say this doesn't make sense anymore, and, and that's a real shame. I suppose because J-Bone still wants to do it badly, and I think Koi does, you cannot completely rule out JGR coming back if something were to fall into place. I think they'd really be under a different type of structure. I believe one of the things that JGR could still deliver to a motocross brand if they wanted to get uh, if they wanted to get a manufacturer back on board, they can build stuff more quickly than a lot of the factories even can, especially if you're relying on stuff coming over from Japan or Europe. I believe that might be the only option for them. The traditional race model of we'll get so much sponsorship that we'll be awesome and we'll win. They had a long time to make that happen. It did not happen. I don't want to rule it out. Certainly don't want to see that team go. That one really hurts. And that's just the internal side. What's even more of a bummer is what this looks like externally for the sport. Because JGR knew that if they failed at this, anyone else who was ever thinking of launching a motocross team could potentially say, well, if Joe Gibbs Racing cannot do it, how could we? They had plenty of money. They had plenty of resources. And they probably had more contacts with outside sponsors than any other team ever could have. And they still couldn't get a sponsor. So that's scary. Now, look, every situation is different. You cannot guarantee, because it went sideways for JGR, that it could not work for someone else. Uh, but that's going to be the perception. And I think they really felt that pressure. I think that's why they kept digging in 2019 and the 2020 seasons to keep going and not give up on this. But now it just doesn't make sense to keep going. And that's not good because, man, for sure, 2007, 2008, it seemed like this was going to be the way by 2020, all teams were going to operate. And we've lost more of these type of teams than we've gained over the last few years, especially if you go back, RCH folding and things like that. So it's just tough sledding. And I did a video about this and how it affects. You would think that this is all about, you know, these teams need to be smarter with marketing. What's the problem with marketing? What's the problem with marketing? Why can't they get sponsors? And I've heard every suggestion from every fan, crazy stuff. But I have a terrible secret that I have to share here. This is no longer about the marketing side for sponsors. This isn't about getting a bigger logo on the side of the bike if we had more plastic on the bike. This isn't if the riders would do something on the podium to make it more obvious who sponsors them. You cannot even play that game any longer. No race team can get sponsors any longer by just saying, this is the amount of exposure that we will get you for your dollar because something was invented about 15 years ago that is a better advertising model than anything else anyone can have. And that is Google and Facebook and social media. I don't know if you realize this, but when you look at something on your phone and then the ad keeps popping up in your face, that's Google tracking you. That's Google customizing ads, giving you exactly what you'd be most susceptible to buying and following you around. And these are clickable, trackable ads that the, the advertiser can find out all this data on the prospective customer. And Google offers this relatively for cheap. It is impossible to compete with that. So a lot of race teams have now realized if we try to play the game of how much exposure can we get you for the dollar, we're going to lose. So they've got to come at it in totally different ways. This has become egonomics instead of economics. There is still a certain cool factor to being part of a race team. There's certainly a rich guy that just wants to spend his money or a CEO that just says, I want to be a part of a race team because I get to be important. I get to be in that truck. I get to be on the sidelines. In NASCAR terms, you get to sit right next to the crew chief. They set up the pit box for the crew chief with chairs right next to him. So the big CEO that's writing this massive check can sit next to him. That's an experience that CEO can't get anywhere else. Maybe there's clients that that company wants to entertain. What a great way to do it. They often talk about the term business to business. Sometimes... Someone will sponsor a race team because when they get that kind of behind-the-scenes access at the races, they meet other people. For example, JGR, right? So on the NASCAR side, they're a Toyota team. There are people that will sponsor them just so they can get in 
with the higher ups at Toyota because they know if they go to the races with JGR as a sponsor, maybe they'll meet someone at Toyota and maybe their company builds some widget or does some thing. In the business world, getting time on the golf course with a high ranking CEO, that's the ultimate goal. I, if I could just get five minutes to talk to this guy. So often, racing is the type of environment that can bridge that gap. That's where they talk about the business to business, the egonomics, all those things. And sometimes just a rich guy that wants to spend money. The world of sports car racing, what's uh, under the umbrella of IMSA now, or maybe you've heard of the Rolex 24 or the 24-hour Le Mans, that is not an economic model that makes any sense on paper. That thing is just rich guys that love what they do. They get to go out on the track in their Ferrari or their Corvette or whatever it might be, and they'll fund racing efforts just because they like it. That is unfortunately really the only model that's left in the motorsports side because Google and Facebook are so effective at selling ads. So this is a real problem because you used to have both avenues. Race teams could sell to the company that was just looking for what made sense from a dollars and exposure ratio, and they would have the rich guy or the CEO uh, that likes it. We've lost half of that. There are a few companies, obviously, that just like this for branding circumstances. Obviously, Red Bull and Monster and Rockstar have felt that way. Thank goodness for that, that they could spend less money with Google, but obviously they don't feel that's the way they want to market their brand. There are probably other brands that feel that way, but not a lot. So it is definitely tough times for sponsors. And oh, by the way, oh, by the way, we had COVID-19 this year, which is making things even more unsure. If you're pitching a sponsor in an incredibly uncertain economy, no one's even exactly sure what the races are going to look like next year. Not a good time. So this is just a gnarly situation overall to try to figure out. It's not as easily solvable. I wish it was as a lot of the suggestions that I see from fans. And that's really, man, that's not good. You know, it's, I, I wish it was just larger radiator shrouds and uh, bingo, bango, checks are rolling in and teams are back on the road. That really doesn't have anything to do with it. It is absolutely crazy the unintended bad consequences that social media has brought about. It is certainly fun and it is cool. It has changed the world, but it has not changed the world entirely for good. And this is not just old guy. I'm in my 40s now saying this. I'm just saying that there's real data out there that has shown how this has messed things up. And that's why there has been some talk. I don't think it's really going to go anywhere, but they have brought the heads of Google and Facebook and these companies in to discuss, do they have monopoly power? Have they gotten to that point? The amount of advertising revenue that they have sucked up from every other industry on earth, and that includes traditional media, we're a little lucky at Racer X because we're so enthusiast focused. I'd say if you're, say, Yoshimura, you still know that Racer X is a better avenue to get the word out than probably Google or Facebook. But that's very rare to be this entrenched as an enthusiast niche. If you're a toothpaste company, there is only one place and one place only that you should probably be spending your money. And then that screws up everybody else that has any type of thing based on an advertising model, which is like, Every magazine, every newspaper, every media outlet, every TV station, every radio station. Dude, they're all getting squeezed. I once heard something crazy that like of all internet advertising dollars, like 80% of it goes to Google and Facebook and the rest of the world fights over like 20% that's left of every other type of thing in the internet is getting 20% of it. So we'll see if there's a day of reckoning coming. I don't, from what I've heard, these antitrust monopoly talks are not going to go anywhere. These companies are not going to be broken up. Or if it happens, it'll be way, way down the road. It's what we call external forces. And we love this racing thing so much that we're often able to look at it only as a racing thing. But there are times where we bump up against the world around us. COVID-19, certainly. This new advertising paradigm, certainly. It has affected the racing thing. And the reason I'm passionate about this, the reason I just did a 20-minute rant on this, is because... I just don't like it when I hear people say, well, these teams are just dumb. These teams are just stupid. They need to just do this and get sponsors. So I just try to point out sometimes that it's like, no, it's not because they're dumb. It, they, they've, they've got real problems. And the final thing, which I always emphasize, is this sport is not that big. This is a niche sport. It has never been a mainstream America sport. It's never been mainstream in any country. 
So when we see this dearth of outside sponsorships and outside teams, I always considered outside sponsorship just a bonus. It was certainly nothing you could count on in a sport that is not mainstream and most people don't even know it exists. So to me, it was always lucky that there were any sponsors at all as opposed to why aren't there sponsors for every single race team out there. So along those lines, Geico Honda is gone. JGR is gone. We did not hear much about the Rocky Mountain ATV MC team either way, but kind of when you hear the footsteps of JGR's done and Geico Honda's done, you start wondering about all these other teams. Now the MCR Honda team, that's Bullfrog, Bullfrog Spa's smart top, I talked to Tony Lessie two weeks ago, and he said, we're lucky because Mike Genova, ultimately the team owner, is funding this. We want to have sponsors. It's great to have sponsors, but we don't have to have sponsors to go racing. So they were really never in doubt of going racing in 2021. But the other teams, any team that is not a regular factory team, I think there were worries. And we didn't hear much about the Rocky Mountain team. And then all of a sudden, at this KTM event, the event took place Tuesday morning. I didn't hear anything about this team until Monday night. And all of a sudden, yes, the team is here. Yes, the team is good. And the team will now have Joey Savacci on board. What? Joey Savacci? Where is Blake Baggett? Where is Blake Baggett? Blake Baggett did have another year on his contract. That's what the team had announced, that he had a three-year deal a couple two years ago. They announced that. He would have a contract for 2021. We did reach out to the Baggett camp. And someone did confirm, yes, they still had a contract. Now, the official word from this team is that they couldn't come to terms with Blake. He wasn't a free agent. They weren't negotiating in the traditional sense. Obviously, 2020 was a crazy year. So Baggett doesn't show up on the team any longer. And, you know, Geico and JGR are having their issues. And I just kind of assumed, oh, I bet you Forrest Butler, the team owner, his back was probably up against the wall. He was in the corner. There were probably some dark days. But I had the chance to interview him, and uh, he says no. He said it was never at the point where he thought he would not be going racing ever again at all. It was more a matter of maybe the team would have to shrink in size, or maybe they'd have to do things differently, or, or a lower budget. Uh, but he says that it was actually okay. So we'll talk to Forrest and Joey Savacci in just a moment. Uh, but I do want to mention MX Tech Suspension, manufacturing professional aftermarket suspension for riders who want excellent comfort and control. Their quality engineering is based on a lifetime of specializing in dirt bike suspension. So they have developed a lucky fork, dual springs, dual cartridges, huck valves, and ultra lightweight. Because MX Tech utilizes the latest in technology and coatings to deliver maximum performance while remaining the lightest shock available. Go to mx-tech.com for more information. We're all about the hyphens here. Yoshimira-RD.com and MX-Tech.com. So now let's talk to Forrest Butler. And he essentially splits this COVID year into two segments. You had the March-April time that was terrible and no one knew what was going on in the world at all. And then the time when they got back to racing and things started to look a lot better. So we'll start off talking about the dregs of the pandemic back in April. April was just the unknown as, sure. as I would call it right <clears throat> and then you got on the wishful you know super crush was like we we're gonna go to Glendale uh, when you're on if you're on my end yeah we were the team in you were working on plans weekly you know and every mm -hmm. time we got pushed back you'd get more concerned and worried yeah but once it was finally booked once you finally got to Salt Lake once you were finally racing no it wasn't it wasn't normal by any means and changes were going on everywhere but yeah once we raced and I was like okay we're racing again and then you know, then on my own side with sponsors, like yeah, it's been a heck of a year. Things are are drastically, drastically changed. But oh yeah, by the time I went racing again, some of those changes had already been made for me. So the path was already laid on what we needed, what we had to do, or what we had to work with. And then outdoors getting ready to go originally at the beginning of July was a real like was a real hope. That's that's the next thing I remember was finding out we weren't going to be racing 4th of July weekend and maybe the next was almost like, ah, and then all of a sudden when they announced that it was going to be a month. Yeah. That was when I, I remember talking to the Coombs myself on the phone, just, is this really what's going on? And that was almost like I want to say, <laughs> not to put words in Carrie's mouth, but I had a phone call with Carrie and it was almost like one of those times where I think the teams weren't communicating. We, we, all, we all weren't communicating teams with promoters like we should be. Some, mm -hmm. some people were, but yeah. not everybody. Yeah. And that, I think, helped because a lot of the phone calls from there moved forward and they knew what a lot of the teams were working with with different dynamics. And so No, like, I, you're not telling stories out of school. I heard that too. Like you specifically, your team. Like 
we need to have some races here. Uh, hey, yeah. Exactly. So if we wouldn't have gone racing, I I, I don't know. But yeah. the fact is that we did. We just mm -hmm. my way of going about it was taking it time for time again. Just yeah, being being thankful for each race we were getting and each thing we were getting going forward. Right. And then as far as talks and plans for 2021, as they started to come together, you just we're still living in the unknown. Is the truth be? Yeah. You know, we, yep. we have these series we're planning for and everything, but I think at first everybody was like, well, let's just get to elections and we'll get to elections and we'll all know what we're going to do. <laughs> no, here you are with, we another, don't know. with another first and you have no idea what's going on. Right. So. But, okay, so right. March, April, everyone on earth doesn't know what the future holds, but you're not saying this went on for six months or it's not going to this day where you're not sure if you were racing. It just those first two months that like everybody was struggling, you had that. But for the most part, you weren't worried about becoming like what happened to Geico Honda or what happened to JGR. Yeah, I would. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried because I'm a worrier, and oh, anybody who knows okay. me. So in general, I worry about everything first and foremost. Yeah. Um, you know, confidence in the program behind it, and what level, I guess. Better answer would be, what level are we going to go racing at? That would be uh, the unknown. Okay. You know, okay. you don't know what level you're going to go racing at, where yeah. you're going to go racing at. But again, it all starts to follow the series. So my stuff is more in generally set up on what we're going to be doing and what actually exists out there. Yeah. So I've had confidence we're going to go racing, but at the same time, how can you say it's not scary when you start hearing the rumors that Geico's going away? Yeah. You know, just yeah. you you don't believe um, it. In my shoes, honestly, I didn't believe it because it's right. internet stuff and I'm just not going to follow the internet stuff. I figured there had to be more truth behind it. So I really honestly didn't believe the Geico thing or even talk to a friend there until one of, I think, when did they make the final announcement? The last race? Oh, done, done, yeah. Final race. You know, I think that, it was like Thursday. That was college. the first time I yeah. believed it when it was officially yes. released and true and it, it right. happened. Yep. And then even JGR, yeah, they're, they're all heartbreaking. You know, hope, hope they come back in their own way or maybe it's temporary plans, but. Right. Same thing. It's been a media ride and they're, they're constantly on a roller coaster with it, so I didn't think. I just thought, okay, it's again, you know, it's just like last year. They'll take their time and they'll figure it out. They'll get it ready. Like yeah. again, everybody seems to want the industry standard because when things were great, we were all able to have everything ready in October and announce it. Right. And I always think about like Jeremy answering questions last year in November, December, like, yep. guys, I understand everybody else wants an answer, but we're just on our own schedule right now. And when we find out, we'll release it. And sure enough, when they found out and got yep. it together, they released it. Yep. So that's honestly what I thought myself was going on again. So again, when that one, whoever texted me that day, like it's done, done. I was like, no, we can't be remembered. He's like, no, right. no, there, it's online. It is. They they made it official. So it's it's shocking. It's not good for the industry by any means. Yes. But it's a it's a show of what's really out there. Yeah. 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 Do you think, by the way, are you able to separate any of this from like COVID twenty twenty and like problems in general? Is it like ah, it was just twenty twenty? Or is some of it like, because I don't think the Geico thing really had anything to do with 2020. I don't know if JGR did either. Uh, you'd be asking me questions that I honestly God, don't no know idea. the answer on. No, right. I, I would I would assume if you asked me not knowing, I would assume that it was all COVID related. Oh, you think it's all COVID related? Yeah, but I don't, I don't, unless you know something, I don't know, no. like a top secret. But no, COVID's been nasty. And I think that's, you get in your industry, you get in your world, you get in your bubble. And then, yeah. you know, I got friends that I got. Yeah, just people in all different industries all over right. the place and at the end yep. of the day it falls down to 52 million people unemployed <laughs> i mean this is this yeah. is a national it's a global pandemic sorry yeah. not national global, global and, it, yeah. and it's not over yep and i there's people who completely get it there's people in the middle and there's people who are living in a bubble who don't get it but yeah we're, we're living a pandemic so when I mean, you got to slow down and think like man this is the stuff that my how, I don't know if they're going to have books by the time our grandkids are, yeah. are in there. However so, they read. Yeah. However they read, yes. they will sit down and read about this the same as we have about Vietnam and World yeah. War II and things. And when you think about it like that, that's how, that's what you got to do to realize the magnitude of what we're living through. You know, it actually, when you see that like, you know, oh, the Indy 500 had two years off during the World War. They didn't have a World Series. That's when it actually gets scary because you're thinking like, oh, we're being... We can't live without it. We'd all be out of jobs. And you're like, oh, it's happened before. Yeah. Massive things have been shut down because of world events. <laughs> yeah. There's no guiding light to say like, oh, it can't possibly happen. It's literally happened. Yep. There's been, yeah, no Indy 500 because of World War II. So why not our little thing? Yeah. yeah and I, if on, on the interview, I know it's like the interview isn't going to match for people who are here for the release. But when I was talking up there, you've, inter you've done this event for half the years now that I've been up there talking yeah. and 
each year you think about what you want to talk about and where you're at and the new thing and you know this year I, if there was anything up there I almost got shaky because I was looking at the crowd as we started and I was just kind of like holy crap like it, got, it just got exciting like I couldn't believe every seat was filled with yeah. people standing around the outsides and I've seen some years where it wasn't even that big so if anything up there I was speaking the truth it was it was exciting it's exciting to know there is a plan there is something you're working for it and yeah. you just got to have hope that it's going to work out and then we're going to go racing which I think we are I think it'll just more be a question of it's really hard to guess where you're going to be two and a half months from now in this world exactly you know but I, I don't think it's crisis level at this point it, I either, do, okay. either do I yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's different levels of the pandemic, but hey, until the pandemic's over, it's not over, you know. So yeah. All right, um, you have a, a rider change. What can you say on this? Um, nothing other than this is the this is the new team moving moving forward for 2021. You know, Justin Bogle has been with the team for two years. One year he was a last minute fill in for an injured rider, and last year was his shot and it's just like typical rider bad luck he got hurt right off the bat and missed the whole year so the person yeah. that he filled in for the year before was now the fill-in rider that's right um but you know for justin it is i think covid as a as a rider this has nothing to do with i guess it, it does have to do with team but as a rider the covid thing worked out for him and this is i, I really mean this, this is an important part i want to say with head injuries it's become a huge thing in the last number of years right i mean right. from football into us mm -hmm. what's the right time off what do you do what do you i think for justin this was you know if it would have been a normal year it would have been written off he'd have missed the whole season yeah and, and what would he what would he be doing yeah but because we had so much time off from covid justin was able to let his head heal mm -hmm. the right way mm -hmm. and at the end of the day he had a concussion yep but it healed properly yep. he came back at the right time there was never a forced time Yep. Maybe waited longer than he was supposed to, which mm -hmm. all resulted, you know, in his own findings and learnings, a clearer head than he's had in a really long time, you know. And then just like when he's speaking out there about really knowing that this is what he wants to do, I think you have the medical side of that where his brain is properly healed and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then he's got the mental side that this is 100% what I still want to do, you know. And he's young and the talents and what he's got, his skills on a dirt bike are just unbelievable, truly, yeah. you know. Yep. And, uh, there's different types of injuries out there that wear guys out. And I, again, I think in the big picture, it seemed bad a year ago for him or 10 months or whatever, how yeah. long it's been. But now I don't think it could have been better. I think it was a good thing for him, honestly. The, the, the time. The, ta the, yeah. the time off to heal and feel right, right and see everything from the outside looking in in one hell of a year. <laughs> well, really, his last couple of nationals, the results started to come around. We, yeah, we wouldn't have been racing in September and October. Exactly. In a year. We would have yeah. never seen it. Where's uh, Baggett? You got anything you can say on that? No. We just have to come to terms on 2021 in the future, and that's yep. all there is to say. All right. And then, so with Joey, I mean, dude, another weird side effect of 2020 is that a guy like that ends up being just available. Yeah, the thing with Joey is uh, it wasn't, it was really, again, I guess in the big picture for our team and our outline, we just picked Justin. That's why everybody's been, what's the team going to be? You know, we just yeah. came in turns and picked Justin maybe two weeks ago, if it's been two weeks. Vogel. Yeah. Okay. And really that's, Even that was two weeks. Yeah, yeah. So it was really between those two. Like that, you know, there were some other people on the list and just a group of riders that we were looking at and talking to. So when, as far as talking to Joey, we were talking to Joey about that spot. You know, Vogel might not oh, have been in that spot. That okay. was going to be Joey. Who was it going to be? I see. We decided to go with Justin for our own reasons and then the way everything worked out just you know then we were open to looking for another rider and i see that's why joey the joey thing is, is just just went on as far as with the team that's why he's not riding or anything yet so we just came to right. but you had been discussing with him for much longer we yeah not yeah. not too much longer i mean in this off season just call it the off season but the off season this year went with racing right so people have been calling obviously they yeah. want to ride for the team just like they're calling everywhere so yeah we didn't know each other, but as far as talk time, no, it was really the only talking we had done would be for for Justin's spot, which just didn't know it was going to be, but we decided it was going to go with Justin, and that was that was it. And then next thing you know, it came back in the picture, hey, are you still available? Would you like to ride for the team? And we just came to terms pretty quickly. So you're going to be stoked. This is a heck of a guy to get. This is a guy that could win. Yeah, as, as far as stoked, it's happy for the team and the progress of where we're going, you know, ultimately. Joey showed a lot of it's one of those one of those riders that you're leaving the 250 class and they've been there so long and you're written from it you don't know 
you know, you know they're really good, but is it the team, is it the guy, you know, what is it? And right. then they go on their rookie 450 year, and the kid came out at Monster Cup yeah. and almost won the thing, and you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's a little faster than he thought he was. Yeah. And then he went that whole rookie year when he was on Eli's team or Cowie team, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm sitting here bumbling on it, but when he – when he's on Cowie. Rookie year, right yeah. for Cowie. Yeah. I thought it was just a, a phenomenal rookie year, for yep. sure, you know. Um, and then this last year, I think it would have been just fine on that team, too. He just got hurt, so he missed Supercross. And then again, you have the pandemic and the way everything worked out. And then yep. the way his injury was with the timing of racing, he didn't get to showcase riding. So he's he's young, and uh, yeah, him and Justin are, are very similar in age. And, friends are just looking forward to getting getting to work and doing what we've been doing for 20 years now just trying to be better and trying to help our riders be the best they can be and get the best results they've ever gotten moving forward just nothing's changing uh you do even know where some of this is even going to be based out of right now like where they're even going to be riding or is it I mean, so much stuff seems to be in flux right now well i mean justin's based out of, you know justin's home is well, he's oklahoma, oklahoma yeah. so nothing's yep. changing there he'll do oklahoma and california like always yeah i mean obviously we're not racing in california this year so guys won't be out here as much i would that's say right. on, that's on right. pre-guessing like, yeah to be honest we're in the middle of figuring that stuff out right now yeah yeah forward. yep um joey's obviously already from the florida area yeah i think more and more guys migrating to florida like you said he'll be riding somewhere in florida right i, I honestly even doing the interview i just don't know answers to a that's lot of the I mean. questions like, because i haven't knows. even i haven't even been there yet i haven't haven't gotten there yet that was, yeah. wasn't prime concerns or worries he'll be out here this week and get on the bike for the first time tomorrow and yep. test for a week and we'll take those home and he'll figure out what he's doing and where he's going to be based out of and we'll move from there okay so at no point this year during the normal racing once we went racing in salt lake once we went racing in the nationals you weren't hanging by a thread for nine months everybody was hanging by a thread march and april but you had ways of thinking you'd still be out there in 2021 it's better than other teams can say you know, is how do you answer the question if it's your own self-confidence or belief? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, but no, I, you know, the more you keep asking me the question over and over, so the more I want to answer the question, yeah, of course, of course there's been worries, you know. Yeah. Are they the same worries that are spread all over the internet? No, absolutely That's not. That's why I'm asking. You know, That's why I'm asking. If I could address yes. it, it's the internet. That's why I'm the internet's the internet, and yeah. I've completely... Done, done exactly what I feel is right, which is my business is my private business, and that's it. So yeah, I can pick and choose if I want to go be in internet battles with people that I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not their business. It's mine and my sponsor's business. I think the bigger show is we're here, yeah. we're launching everything today, and today was a big day to launch a show that everything that you're seeing with the team, the team's here, the team's fine, the team's moving forward, and right. you know, and as strong as it can be, doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Have things changed? Yeah, things have changed, and I, I being a realist, see, see changes still coming with, with the series, you know? I'd be, I'd be extremely blessed if we get to the series and just start murdering it moving forward, and everybody's I really know. I know. really going well, and fans are there out of capacity. You know, that's that's the things I'm worried about now. So, yeah. back answering your original question, my wife would be looking at you with cross eyes right now if she, said, she heard me say I wasn't worried. Yeah. Of course <laughs> I've been worried. Just worried for all my own reasons again I, I think yeah. in the big picture racing has gotten so big it's hard for me after 20 years to see me doing anything else so I answer it in the way that maybe it wouldn't be doing both you know motocross and supercross it could be supercross only yeah maybe it could be motocross only yep maybe I just decide to go GNCC racing right you know I've, I've got a lot of good partners some that we've been with for 16 plus years right you know I believe in the sponsors that believe in me and again you I am not involved with the internet side of it you know but it can definitely it can definitely do its damage and spread all over the place and that's where you just gotta as far as I'm concerned pick up pick your path you know and my path is to keep it my business so there are Forrest Butler's thoughts was not going to stop racing just if he had to he would have shifted the priorities around and, and figured out a way to get it done although that bag of information is still uh, a little bit odd and to me a little bit unanswered especially we don't know what Baggett's racing plans are for 2021 does he have racing plans what's going to happen there now, I was a little surprised during that interview that Forrest kept mentioning the internet and what people on the internet say. And I finally, at one point, said to him, like, why do you even care? 
just ignore it. Why, why does a team owner have to care about what fans say on the Vital MX message board? Apparently, the reason it matters is because when you don't have anything locked down yet, you don't have any contracts signed, you can't necessarily say anything officially at all, the industry in general, I guess, starts using those things as their sources, and then he has to answer those questions about the rumors. And it reminds me a little bit of, say, what the Pro Motocross schedule was like this summer, where people were hitting me up every Monday, hey, dude, what's the schedule actually going to be? And I'm like, dude, as far as I know, the actual schedule is going to be the actual schedule that they've actually posted on their actual website. They're like, yeah, but what is it, what is it really going to be? Like, it says they're going to have nine races, but how many are they going to really have? And it was rumor patrol all the time. You know, oh, they said they're going to start at Red Bud in the middle of July, but when are they really going to start? So I guess that's what 2020 is all about. There's rumors that get out there, some completely unfounded, some that actually did turn out to be true. And if you're in Forest position or the MX Sports position or anything, a series that could shut down, a team that is or isn't shutting down, it's just hard to keep a handle on all that and assure people that, look, we have things, we just can't officially say them yet. I was just shocked to hear constant references to what people say on the internet, and I didn't think it mattered to these teams, but now you know why. They must get phone calls based on these rumors. We'll send another shout-out to Yoshimura here. Remember to go to Yoshimura-rd.com. Check out the RS-12 exhaust system now. Big power gains for the KX450F. Absolutely, incredibly massive power gains for the KTM 500 EXC Dual Sport, the Husky 501 Dual Sport. And go to mx-tech.com for information on the Lucky Fork, better suspension for your dirt bike. Now let's talk to Joey Savacci. Didn't hear much from him, but he's back. Yep, was this a master plan? Or were you just uh, right now? No, I mean, it was like, I remember talking to middle of the season, you know, like if there was a list of places that I wanted to be, you know, like, I have text messages that say this was really one. Yeah. Really? And uh, I'm kind of shocked that we were able to keep things as quiet as we did. Just because yeah. this industry is very hard to do that. Because it's once one person knows, they yep. go tell somebody, but they're like, hey, don't tell anyone. But I found this out, and then it's just a chain. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we did a pretty good job of that. Um, so maybe for most people, it feels like a surprise. Um, but, you know, for me, it's kind of been something that we've been working on. And, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, this year itself has been crazy, so it's kind of hard to put in to words as far as if things went according to plan or not. I think that's not even a phrase we can use for 2020. Nothing, yeah. nothing has gone according to plan, but uh, this was definitely number one on my list where I wanted to be. And, uh, you know, regardless of, of the backstory, we made it happen, and, and this is where we are. Yeah, so as I'm saying, it wasn't like you hadn't even thought about this team. No. Until 10 days ago or something. No, no, no. It would have been in your mind yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where are you actually even as a racer? Like, you did come back. You did race outdoors. Are you still dealing with lingering, or is your foot and everything all good? No, we're good. Um, yeah. Actually, I feel better in a boot than I do without a boot. Okay. I think it's just, like, yeah. one of those things. It's, like, uh, just more support. Yep. Um, when I was out here a couple weeks ago, right before Halloween, um, I went and I was getting my foot worked on just to kind of help break up some scar tissue because yep. there is a little bit of tightness in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as far as like when it's in the boot and riding wise, I've I've yet to have any issues. The only time I've had an issue was I crashed in Colorado this year outdoor, and I just couldn't get my foot out of the way. Yeah. And even if I had a healthy foot, I think the result would have been the same. It just you know caught my toe and twisted my foot around. Yeah. And it's that's one of those things that you, you just don't crash, you don't have that problem. So yeah. it's uh. But um, no 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 issues with my foot. That's not that's not even a thing anymore. So. Were you at any point? Were you even talking to JGR for the next year, or were they not talking? Because obviously it's just uh, shut down, but I don't yeah, know where you were in that process. I, I guess I don't really read the internet for obvious reasons, but I don't know. I think the story kind of got twisted there. Um, it wasn't that I had no interest and vice versa. I just think they, like a lot of us, were trying to figure out like what the next step was. Right. And it's you can't really, you don't want to get anyone's hopes up and talk about anything until you have a game plan. Yeah. So it's one of those things where like, I didn't ask about it and they didn't talk about it type thing and I think you know they're just trying to figure out what they're doing just like I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do right. so uh, never was it like a, I don't uh, I have no interest thanks but no thanks type thing it was just like hey like they got things they're figuring out and I got things I need to figure out and you now our, our paths just didn't cross um, more or less yeah so the team's shutting down yeah which is a bummer yeah it's uh 
you know, outside of outside of me and the riders, you know, you have crew chiefs, you have mechanics. I mean, you have so much staff that is now out a job, right. and that sucks because you know it's that's how they provide for their family and put food on the table. So. Yeah. Um, I've been, you know, I was obviously sidelined for a lot of last year, and I know what that feels like to not have income, and it's tough, and it puts you in a spot you don't want to be in. So, it's uh, it's super unfortunate, um, and it sucks. And I hope all those guys, you know, put together something or find another opportunity somewhere else. Okay, so you have you even ridden this bike yet? Not at all. No. That's why you didn't ride it. You have not ridden it. Hey, just say it's really good. Okay, Bogle says it's good. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay. I mean, obviously, I think it's a good bike. I think, yeah. uh, I mean, the team alone has won races last year. Um, you know, look at KTM as a whole, they've won yeah. titles and races, so obviously the bike's good. There's no worries about that. It's just, uh, I think, for the long run, the big picture for me, it was probably the smartest thing that I didn't ride today, just because, you know, with media and everything here. Uh, obviously, I'm sitting here like, just, just let me go for a couple laps, you know, but... Um, Think, oh, when you saw them out there, did you? Oh, did yeah, I was see? just like, man, I think I could do a couple laps. Just give me a chance. But, you yeah. know, I think it's going to be best to get get our feet wet, a slower pace, kind of get things figured out, and then we can transition and, and get things going. But as far as, like, you physically and all that, you're good. Oh, yeah, no, we're good, yeah. Right yep. Okay. I mean, I, I rode a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've ridden since outdoor, and i just been hanging out, been golfing. What is your, uh, where are you going to be based out of? Is your place where you're riding still, I don't know what's going Drop on there. Drop a bomb here, dude. Drop a bomb? I'm, stay, I'm, uh, I'm actually Justin Bogle's roommate. I'm staying at his house now. Yeah, it's... You're going to be o o Oki? Or no. here? Here in Cali. Uh, I'll still be in Florida. I don't You'll know. You'll still be in Florida? Yeah. Yes. It sounds like things are in flux with that, too. There's a lot of things unknown right now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Right. Yeah. So I, don't, you're... I don't have an answer, like, right now, but... I didn't think so. I'll be in Florida. Okay, you know you'll be in Florida. Yes. Just don't know where. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything else to say. You haven't ridden yet. You don't exactly know where you're going to ride. I think there's seriously no other topics. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had more answers for you. That's all right. I got a blister on my thumb from golfing. <laughs> that's about That's the only thing exciting. Oh, yeah. We got to move on. We got to get on the motorcycle. Dude. Motorcycle. Um, I hear you. Me too. Well, I'm, this is what I'm going to hit it for stuff on. Dude, like the excitement of just, you had to, okay, it all worked out now. But there had to be some dark moments of like, I don't know if this is going to. Oh, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, I'm sitting at home, and I just got done talking about providing for my family. You know, like, yep. I'm, I'm sitting at home and um, taking the path that I chose to take to get here was stressful. Um, and I'm, I mean, my wife would be the first one to tell you, like, I don't really stress on anything. You know, I'm, I'm not a believer in, in stressing on something that I can't change. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's one of those things where, like, I mind made up what I was gonna do and that's what my gut told me was right and that's the path I went down and it uh, took longer than I should say it took longer than I would have liked it did but at the same time it was just one of those things that it needed time to well you didn't come have the together. assurance the whole yes. time and it just needed time to come together and it, yeah. it was uh, yeah it was stressful I'd say dark times is a good board is a good way to put it it was was there like a like yeah, a plan, a a plan B, plan C, and plan D. Yeah, I had those. Got, of other teams? No. Like other jobs? Just I, my maybe do it myself and right. maybe a different. I mean, there was. I had things lined up. I see. As far as like, hey, if this doesn't work, you know, what's my next plan? And if that doesn't work, what's my next plan? So there you was. You were going racing? I was going racing. Okay. It might not have been how I wanted to, but yeah, I was, yeah. I was yep. going racing because I, <laughs> I truthfully feel like I can't. I, I couldn't be okay with stepping away where I am right now. I feel like I, I have a lot to prove and I feel like I can be competitive and I think I've shown that, you know, when I was healthy that I can be competitive and I can run up front and I can battle, you know, uh, with the best guys. So I just didn't feel like I could step away right now and, and you know, obviously you never want to, I don't ever want to be in this position ever again. Yeah. And let's put it that way. I, I'm going to do everything that I can in my power to to be ready and, and to perform to the best of my ability and to make sure that, uh, you know, not only for me, but for, for my wife and for my little one that, you know, we don't ever have to stress about um, putting food on the table and, and, and getting a job. And that's just, for me, it's it's hit home. And, you know, when things are going well, it's awesome and everything's good. And 
Um, most people don't realize that when things stop going well, it's uh, it's a reality check. And uh, so I just would prefer to never be in this position ever again. And, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that that never happens. Dude, cause it was two in a row. Or was this in, uh, not quite as touchy as last year? Uh, was it two oh, years like this in no, a row? no, no, no. Last year was not touchy at all. Oh, you had the JGR thing. We, we were okay. talking for a while. Like it, oh, was, okay. it was just a matter of finalizing things. Okay. It might have taken a while. Like, you know, we were in Paris when we signed it. But it was one of those things that was like we talked about it basically before outdoor even finished. I see. Yeah, so I it see. was it was there for a while. It was just like, hey, like, we need to tweak this. Let's try to tweak this. Like, yeah. just talking at that point. Gotcha. So this year for, for sure was a lot more stressful. Um, and, like, and like I said, I'm not one that gets stressed out because... I can tell my wife, what, what am I gonna fix by stressing out? You know, like I'm not doing anything. Like stressing out isn't gonna either give me a job or not. It's not gonna make anything better. It's gonna make everything worse. So I'm a firm believer. Everything happens for a reason, and that's what I was sticking with. So Joey Savacci, that is a really intriguing story. The ceiling is very high, underrated high ceiling on Savacci. Remember, this was a guy who, throughout most of his 250 career, he battled guys like Cooper Webb. He battled guys like Cincerulo. He battled guys like Osborne. He battled guys like Plessinger. There were times where he was just as fast as them. So, And his rookie year on the Kawasaki 450 was pretty darn good. So the ceiling is high because of that bike. That's essentially a factory KTM. And if he truly is healthy and ready, he could do some serious damage. And amazing how this all fell together. You know, you're going to a point where you might have to spend your own money to go racing. And then next thing you know, you've got... Maybe at least, and I'm sure he's going to tell himself, one of the best bikes on the starting gate. That's pretty awesome. So we'll see how Joey does getting a lifeline there. Again, this all begs the question of where is Baggett going to go? What is Baggett going to do? I will say, and this is just my theory, this is not based on any insider information at all, Baggett. I know that Baggett and I, when we do talk, it's pretty hilarious and fun. I'm kind of the Baggett whisperer, but those talks are few and far between. Baggett is not big on uh, returning text messages and answering phone calls, even at the best of times. He's definitely not talking to anyone about this right now. But I will say, if there is a rider that I could picture, again, this is just me speculating. This is not based on Baggett saying this. If there is a rider I could just see disappearing from the face of the earth and you just never see him at a race and you don't know what's going on ever again, yeah, Baggett would probably be at the top of that list. That doesn't mean that's going to happen. But, I mean, I don't know what other good options are out there. Every team is full. And I don't think Baggett has any desire to ride for free. I don't think he needs to do that um, just to get his name out there. So mm, this will be interesting where this is going to go. But it's Savachi and Bogle. And there's Forrest Butler. And they have survived the dark winter that was 2020 for privately owned motocross teams. Geico Factory Connection Honda, JJR Suzuki, may you rest in peace. We appreciate what you did for the sport. This podcast was brought to you by Yoshimura. Go to Yoshimura-RD.com for the latest, that new Kawasaki KX450 system, the dual sport system for the KTM 500 and the Husqvarna 501. And they've already had RS12s for Suzuki's and Honda's and the YZ250F Yamaha. So lots of cool stuff coming from them. And YoshimiraCycling.com. You can get those Chaleo pedals. I now have a mountain bike back, so I'm going to start running those pedals. And they've got some cycling kits over there as well. And also MX Tech suspension with professional aftermarket suspension for riders who want excellent comfort and control. Quality engineering is based on a lifetime of specializing in this sport. So that's why they developed the Lucky Fork, dual springs, dual cartridges, Huck valves, but also ultra lightweight. You know how some forks they put half the one fork leg has this, the other parts are in the one fork leg only. Try to reduce weight, MX Tech, best of both worlds. Go to mx tech.com for more information. And as always, subscribe to Racer X, support our journalistic endeavors because the likes of Google and Facebook are sucking up advertising revenue, okay? I'm just being honest. Again, we're lucky in this sport that for the most part, companies come to us because we're very niche and they know that. Their audience is our audience, but it's still very odd. So if you want to support us, just subscribe to the magazine, and we will hook you up. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Yeah, same thing that sponsors Forrest Butler's team. We will give you a $25 gift card to RockyMountainATVMC.com if you subscribe to Racer X, and we're only charging to 30 bucks. So do the math, right? And you can get the magazine in print and digital, and we will send you the 2021 Racer X calendar. You'll have it. 
by the time it's 2021. So go to racerxonline.com slash Weege, W-E-E-G-E. Do not use the Pulp link. Do not use the Blair link. Absolutely not. We do not want to help those guys. I want you to help me. All right, that's the Exhaust Podcast. I'm going to come right back with another. We're going to give you a twofer with Maximus and Talon Volden coming up in another episode. Thanks for listening.